We bring you The Lost World of Dinosaurs, which existed 100 million years ago. How did a Coreaceratops that weighed a mere 70 kilograms and was just 1.8 meters in length evolve into a 9-ton Triceratops? When the Big Bang occurred, the history of time and space began. Then the Sun was created from a ball of gas and dust. The light emitted from the Sun enabled life to flourish on one planet. The third planet of the solar system, Earth. Man first roamed the Earth four million years ago. But if we go further back in history, we can see that the Ceratopsian roamed the Earth 160 million years ago. Which dinosaur was the original ancestor of all the Ceratopsians? In 2004, the fossil of the earliest Ceratopsian dinosaur was discovered in China. Dr. Xu Xing named the dinosaur Yinlong, which means hidden dragon. There is a reason why Yinlong is classified as a ceratopsian, although it does not have a tail, which is a characteristic of the species. Uh, 侧面，大家看见它是很光滑的一个很平的，其他的角龙应该长有一个犄角，呃，这是它比较原始的一个方面。Yinlong, the earliest Ceratopsian dinosaur, was just one meter long and rather small. Having no horns or frills, it is hard to believe that Yinlong is an ancestor to Triceratops, but its parrot-like beak is similar in shape to Triceratops. In the Cretaceous period, there were quite a few ceratops with tails covered with quills. The earliest ceratops were relatively small. 它是生活在亚洲白垩纪早期的一类小型植食性恐龙，呃，它有一个非常典型的像鹦鹉一样的嘴，所以我们叫它鹦鹉嘴龙。呃，这个鹦鹉嘴龙呢，它的食物是各种
they raised their young by the river and dug nests in the sand. Scientists believe that the adults brought food for their offspring until they could walk properly. The babies probably squawked for food all day. Korea ceratops had a bone structure that was different from earlier ceratops. With limited defenses against predators, how did Korea ceratops avoid being eaten by carnivorous dinosaurs? It probably used its powerful legs to outrun natural enemies. 80 million years ago, a new species of dinosaur evolved. Just like the others, this dinosaur had no horn. However, it had a completely different body structure. Protoceratops first emerged in Mongolia. In 1923, Weighing 200 kilograms, with a body length of 2 meters, Protoceratops had a frill that made up one-third of its head mass. Due to its heavy head, the dinosaur needed to walk on all fours. The frill had evolved as protection to its neck when encountering carnivorous dinosaurs. Long droughts took a toll on Protoceratops because it only ate plants. The clever Velociraptor used hunting strategies. The raptors have targeted a Protoceratops that can't keep up with the group. It's time to hustle. The group of velociraptors look for a place to spring their attack. Unfortunately, the protoceratops does not detect the looming threat.
They have it surrounded. The lone dinosaur is encircled by the velociraptors. The pack is gone, and now it must fend for itself. Though the velociraptors have sharp teeth, it cannot bite the protoceratops' neck due to the protective frill. One side of a cliff suddenly collapses. In the heat of the battle, the two dinosaurs do not notice the landslide. The protoceratops bites the velociraptor on the arm with its parrot-like beak. The velociraptor retaliates with its claw and cuts through skin. Just then, the two dinosaurs are trapped under dirt. They are turned into fossils. In death, the dinosaurs are frozen in battle. So how would a protoceratops defend itself against a velociraptor? Well, the front of its face is a very sharp beak. It looks like a parrot's or a large turtle's. And those would have been a very good shearing or cutting surface. So anything that goes in that mouth could have been cut in half. So if the velociraptor, as it did, stuck its hand in there or foot into the mouth of a protoceratops, it would have been bitten in half. While protoceratops was different from early ceratops, it still retained a parrot-like beak. As the dry spell on the Asian continent continued, some ceratops migrated in search of food. The Bering Strait once connected North America to Asia. Conclusive evidence was found here that proved ceratops migrated to North America. When Alaska forms this bridge between North America. It's about 110 million years ago. We have evidence from footprints that says that um, once this land bridge is in place, Ceratopsians were among the first to use it. To survive, Ceratopsids migrated across Alaska to the North American continent. It was a dramatic turn of events in the evolution of dinosaurs. Right now I'm on my way to Dinosaur Park in Canada. This was originally a low-lying coastal area, which was a perfect environment for ceratopsians. This layer dates back to the late Cretaceous period, which is about 76 million years ago. The area is famous for its dinosaur fossils. In the last 100 years, the fossils of 42 dinosaur species were excavated from here. This is a fossil processing room at Royal Tyrell Museum, which is situated in the park. Fossils are brought here to dislodge them from the rock, and the process can take up to a year. The dinosaur species that is most commonly found among these fossils is Centrosaurus. Some of the more important features include the parrot-like beak at the front of the mouth, 
we have the large nasal horn over the nose. You can see the eye with an eye socket right here. And then we have this large frill that comes off the back. After Ceratopsians arrived on the new continent, it finally developed a horn. Weighing three tons and spanning six meters in total length, this Ceratopsian became larger but slower in movement. It evolved a horn to defend itself from predators. So when it's a newborn or newly hatched, it's a very small little short horn. And as it grows through its mature teenage, young adult years, years that horn actually becomes relatively large and long, still short compared to Triceratops. When you lose that horn, it may indicate that you're no longer, of a, you're no longer within the breeding clade. Astonishingly, fossils of Centrosaurus number in the thousands here. Just to make it interesting. This fossil layer is unmatched in its size. In Alberta, however, we've learned some amazing things about Centrosaurus. Cent Centrosaurus appears to have lived in herds that numbered well into the many hundreds, if not the low thousands. Uh, we have this evidence because we find Centrosaurus in bone beds that produce many, many thousands of bones and that cover areas about the size of a football field. Oh my God. <laughs> this is incredible, absolutely incredible. <laughs> 